Welcome to the Nathan Lyons Production Masterclass. I'm going to take you through how to make the best dubstep in Logic. Right, so far, I am ready to have my first tune released. So obviously, I know what I'm doing really, don't I? Kind of. No, it's turn it on. So now, now we've got a basic drum beat down. You can kind of forget about that and go into your bass lines and your melodies. But the thing is, if you do an interesting drum beat and one that you can sit there and listen to over and over again without getting a little bit, literally a bit bored, that's half your song down really, because interesting drums make for a good song, because we've got to have a lot of groove and soon to them, especially in dubstep, which is the type of music that we're making really. Yeah, garage. Exactly, it's got, it's got like a garage swing to it, especially like some dubstep songs that are done in like two-step. So you can have, they've, always, they've always got a lot of swing to them, especially like Benga, Felix and the Benga, he's got loads of swing in his drums. So I is so good at dubstep anyway. I'm going to go on to the bass line now. Right, so so far, I've got like a basic little rhythm there. It's not very good, but it's, it'll do what well, I for the purpose of this this tutorial, masterclass, whatever. I can just copy that as a whole and do it. Yeah. Right, so now we've got like a base, a really simple, proper, honestly, it's so simple, anyone could do it, even Matt could do it, and he doesn't even make music. Anyway, we're going to do the sub bass, which is arguably the most important part of dubstep. So that's what gives it its rumble. You can't hear it, you feel it, but your body tricks yourself into thinking you're hearing it, whereas actually you feel it up through your chest. So that's some advanced stuff. Science for right. So Nathan, what artists inspired you to make music? Um, stuff like Rusko, um, Dr. P, Cookie Monster, that kind of thing. That really big bassy music. Cause that's, that's like the first sounds I heard. Rather than stuff that's like more thoughtful and like low key, like burial, burial and that, but like popular dubstep. So that's the first first type of it I really heard, to be honest. Can you see yourself as a successful music artist in a few years' time? Well, yeah, if I get better and just carry on improving and, like, learning. It's hard to be successful, though, because, um, just... So it's hard to break into the music industry, because, like, nowadays it's, like, who you know more than what you know. So if you know the right people but your music's awful and it sounds like it's done by a two year old headbutting a keyboard, as long as you know the right people then it'll be a success. What's the most important part of producing music? I would say, aside from coming up with your ideas, it's the mix down and making sure that everything fits in its place in the mix because you hear some like really good songs that have got good content but because they're not mixed right and mixed well and like to a good consistent standard, they sound absolute rubbish. Like. Especially in dubstep where headrooms are the most important thing in the mix where you've got to mix everything down so you've got lots of space and you can hear all the elements on their own. Kind of listened to music a lot and just thought, I really like that, I want to make it myself and I want to be able to have songs that are like, people go, oh, it's a bad tune, is that? And you know, I just wanted stuff like that and to be like successful at something. It's not really good at anything else, just making music.